Hello and welcome to Testable. In the next 10 minutes or so, I will show you how to get started by setting up your very first experiment. I will also show you some tips and tricks on how to use our platform and point out how you can get help should you ever get stuck. As you may know by now, Testable is great to set up any kind of behavioral experiment or survey using just your browser and without touching a single line of code. The experiment we're going to be setting up today is what we call a flanker experiment. It's a classic psychology experiment that measures the participant's ability to focus on relevant stimuli and ignore distracting stimuli. The classic setup requires participants to match the direction of the arrow in the middle with the uh, correct arrow key on the keyboard and ignoring the directions that all of the other arrows on the side are pointing towards, like so. So here, placing left and then the right. And the hypothesis is that participants will be much quicker in uh, responding to arrows where all of the distractors match the direction and much slower when uh, the arrows on the side do not match the direction of the central arrow. So there's a couple of ways to set up this type of experiment in Testable. You can click on the plus button. This brings up all of the options. And here in the center, you can see user template. That's the easiest way to start any experiment because we have a growing library of already made for you experiments from the classic psychology literature. And here you can see also the flanker task. So you can simply import it, make changes to it as much as you want, substitute our stimuli, and it's really easy. But I also show you another way to set up any type of experiment very, very easily. And this is what, with what we call the natural language form. Here you can see essentially a basic description, description of the kind of experiment that you want to build. And it will be your job by changing these options in, the blue, um, in, in these blue segments to create a scaffold for the kind of experiment you want to build without worrying too much uh, about getting every detail right because it's really easy to fine tune small details later on. So yes, we want experimental trials because we want to present a stimulus and expect a response. I'm gonna go for a simplified version here where we're gonna just do three images instead of five. I'm gonna use the PNG format because this is the image format that my stimuli are in. They should be presented simultaneously on screen. Unlimited time is fine for now. And we do not want to um, show any text uh, besides the stimuli. And yes, key, keyboard pressing is the right way to respond. But instead of the A, S, and D keys, we're going to enable the left and the right arrow keys. No time, lim time limit for now. Yes, we want the correct answer defined because we want to measure accuracy alongside reaction time. No feedback for now after each trial. And again, we can keep a fixed order because it's really easy to add randomization later on as well if you want to. So this is looking good. I can click on generate project now and this will add the project at the top of my list with a default name that I can very easily change to, let's say flanker experiment here. And the moment you've created an experiment testable, it's associated with this unique URL link. This is what you can send to your participants to actually take part and provide responses to your experiment. And by clicking it yourself, you can also see what a participant would see in their browsers once they run your experiment. So there's a default calibration screen at the beginning that you can also disable. It's used to ensure that the size of your stimuli will be the same across different monitor sizes that your participants may use. There's some default instructions. And then we're going into these five trials that we've defined using the natural language form. With three images, I can press the left or the right arrow keys, which I'm doing now to move from one trial to the next. And then after five, I see this default debrief screen that you can customize later on. So the experiment is basically set up and running. All you need to do now is to make some small changes to make it truly yours and to make it work as a flanker experiment. So you can click on the experiment like so to get into the editor view. At the center here is what we call the trial file. This is the core of each testable experimental survey. It's essentially a spreadsheet where each of the rows represents one trial or one survey question. And then each of the columns represents one option or parameter that is required to define that trial. 
You can even download this file as an actual CSV document and edit it in any spreadsheet editor like Excel or Google if you want to. But we always recommend using the editor built right into Testable. At the bottom, you have the Previewer window. So this allows you to check how your changes that you're making in the editor affect your experiment trial by trial. So the first trial here is an instructions trial with two columns that we're using, um, title and content. I can change the title of the experiment and then add some instructions here. And why not, I can also change the label of the button to something more descriptive. This will change the button here that participants have to click to actually start the experiment. Once I'm going into the actual trials, I can see there's a little bit more going on. So I can see that I've got some default images. And the first thing I want to do is to get rid of these default images and instead use actual flanker images. So I can hit the stimuli tab that brings up the media library from the site. And by dragging and dropping the stimuli that I need for my experiment here from my computer to this window, it will upload them into the media library and they're immediately available for my experiment. So I've got some stim columns here, stim one to three. These are my stimuli, stimuli columns that I used to define any kind of multimedia stimuli that I'm needing for my trials. And by replacing the default names with the actual names of my stimuli, so in this case, let's say I want to build a trial where I have uh, an arrow pointing right surrounded by two arrows pointing left. I simply use the name of the, st uh, of the files left and right that will work in conjunction with this ending from the stim format column. So left.png is the name of my official of, of the file that I've got uploaded here in the library. Now, maybe there's a feature that you want, uh, some functionality that you need that is not in the columns that we already have added here. So for example, I'm thinking now that these stimuli are too large. So I want to change the side of a size of my stimuli. And for that, I will need a new column. And anytime you need a new column, you can click on the plus here. It brings up the column menu. You have uh, access to all of the columns that are available and testable. And if you do not know yet what kind of column you need, you can always bring up our help resource here and start searching our guides. So I said I want to change my stimuli size. So I can go for searching stimuli size. And I see that here, the second from the top looks like the right kind of guide. And indeed, I'm learning about a new column called stim size. I'm seeing exactly how I can use it. In this case, I can use a percentage scaling to scale up or down the size of my stimuli. So I'm going to go ahead, add a stim size column. I'm going to hit it with 50%. And my viewer helps me to see that, yes, instantly, this looks like a much more reasonable size for my flanker stimuli. I can make some more changes here to the trial. For example, I've got the key column. This is the column that allows me to define a correct answer because as I said, we want to measure accuracy in addition to reaction time. So since I have the left and right keyboards uh, keys um, activated, the key will be one of these two values. And because in this particular case, my central stimuli is pointing right, I will say that the correct answer for this trial is right. And already I have my very first perfectly functioning trial. I can even interact with the previewer by clicking right now. And I can, you can see how it's uh, progressing from trial to trial. So you can check how your experiment is working in real time. And every time you're happy with the changes you've made to experiment, you want to publish changes. This will save everything you've done in the editor to a new version of the trial file. And by the way, if you go into the files tab, you always see that here there's a the, the current version of your life, uh, of your trial file that uh, runs the experiment, but you also have access to all the versions of the trial file that you can always restore to, revert to, so none of your changes are ever lost. Okay, there's much more to say about Testable. There's many more options to explore. You can add randomization and between subject group designs and logic and uh, staircases. And there's, there's many, many options to explore. I encourage you to go through our help resource, either by searching or by checking out the guides. If you ever need help with something that you can't find here, feel free to contact us by using this option here that brings up a form uh, where you can describe the problem you need. It, it goes straight to our help desk and we reply as quickly as we can. And if you feel that you would need to talk to some of us in person, you can use our help clinic. So here in the top banner, you can click on the join our live clinic button 
click on register now, give us a few details about who you are and briefly describing the problems that you have. And then in the next step, you can uh, choose a 15 minute slot from many available throughout the week. And um, you can have a Zoom call with one of our support staff and we'll be very happy to help you. So enough talking, now it's time for you to set up your very first experiment. We are all excited to see what kind of new discoveries you're gonna be making using Testable and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much for listening.